This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast, the first one of the new decade, and now reaching two decades across uh, with your awesomeness. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, ready to get our geek on with you tonight. First of all, with us all the way from Dormont, from the brand new Studio C, is John Jachilla. He's a gadget guru, a Big Bank International Esquire. I'm also trying to remember my pa- my Facebook password right now. He's so stuck at a. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll, we'll go away because we can see his monitor. So, uh, so we don't. Just dots. It's wow, well, we God, you know. But if I know <laughs> how many dots that, that that helps you brute force it or something, right? Also, back in studio is the Dutters. Hi, everybody. Katie Dudas, social media export extraordinaire. Yep. Stuff and things. <laughs> um, hey, it's really easy to announce your title now. Yay! So, <laughs> Stuff and things. Back again. How you doing? How was your holiday? That's a really open, bad question. Bad open question. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was it. It was a thing. That's, well, well, we're glad to have you here, so we can get awesome. Okay. <laughs> I, I need all the awesome. Can you can donate some there awesome? There you go. To me? If we send send the awesome over the dutters, please. Um, <laughs> But anyways, uh, this is the Awesome Cast. Uh, you can check out everything at awesomecast.com. Of course, uh, we can find links to subscribe on whatever format you like to listen to your podcast or watch your podcast type shows. Uh, you can also email us at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com and tweet us at awesomecast. And of course, we're on the Awesome Cast Facebook page and group, uh, a great group where we get a lot of uh, uh, stories. We'll be talking some of the, about some of the stories here later uh, in the episode that you guys submitted. And of course, we're streaming on the Awesome Cast Twitter and the uh, Sorgatron Media Twitch. If you're catching us on any of those other formats, of course, uh, all the chat is happening over on the Facebook page. So please uh, jump over there and join us for uh, that conversation uh, if you want to interact with us directly. But uh, wherever you are, whatever app, your Apple TV, whatever, if you're just sitting back, relaxing and, and checking it out and you want to hit us up later even, uh, tweet us at AwesomeCast with the hashtag AC476. Uh, you can uh, do, 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 do. also thank you to our, auto, our audio partners, our friends at the 405media.com. They're carrying us, carrying us over on that site as well as uh, streaming, um, I believe, every every weekday at, at noon Eastern if you want to check that out, the latest episode. And our friends over at Post Industrial Audio, postindustrial.com, that uh, are, of course, trying to spread the word of Pittsburgh podcasting. Uh, also, thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesomecast, bringing in the new year here. Our friends at the Coffee Club, uh, $5 level, our friends at Matt Weller, John Diggy DeGore, and John Carmen. That will get some extra uh, pre-show video that we didn't even stream because we didn't get that live yet, you know, to keep it exclusive. Uh, <laughs> not because I didn't get the Facebook going yet or anything, uh, but I'm in that record button a lot. Uh, also, our friends at the fan of the show level, uh, Dutter's favorite Fedor, Michael Fedor, mm-hmm. as favorite. well as pghmuseums.org. Uh, so thank you so much, guys, for supporting the show. Patreon.com slash awesomecast. You get some exclusive videos um, and other stuff uh, throughout the month. Uh, so please support the show if you like what we're doing over there. So let's get into our awesome things of the week, of the decade, of the last few weeks, of the wherever the hell we are with things. Um, who, <laughs> oh, mine's of like the Christmas holiday. Is it? Ooh. All right, let's 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 uh, let's let's wrap. Are you still working on your Facebook over there? No, I'm good. Okay, <laughs> you're kind of in the background. Oh, well, look at that! Now we're, it's a sore exception. That's it's that's fun. <laughs> it's like you're next to me. Oh, Aww. oh! There you go. Oh, now next it's just to me. now it's just you next to you. What are we doing? Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> you always just hit yourself in the face with an iMac. <laughs> it's only twenty pounds. Only twenty pounds. 
Exactly. Uh, let's let, since you're, you're well, you're showing us like your your iMac mount a little bit uh, before the show, but you you have uh, some more uh, mount. Um, <laughs> lots of mounts. Yeah, more mounts to share. <laughs> I, have, I have lots of mounts. Wow. So yeah. So and my mount comes. In, I I know quite often I uh, talk about stuff that's kind of expensive. Um, I actually got a. It's a mount. Oh boy, where'd that go? Oh, there it is. So it's a mount for your phone. Mm-hmm. Um, and it actually fits a Xbox controller. Okay. So you literally, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this justice, um, but so you literally kind of hook it onto the bottom, flip it, oh, sorry, hook it onto the top, clip it into place, and it's the perfect mount for your phone for an Xbox controller, which with the latest version of iOS, you can... That makes it really handy that way. Yep. Mm. So you can play and use your phone. Um, the other thing that it actually has is this little kickstand in the back, so you can actually set it down. Kickstand. This kickstand. Um, so I, I'm pretty happy with it so far. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, games like Fortnite, um, pretty much anything that's on Apple Arcade yeah, uh, works yeah. with it. Yeah. Um, so you can play sneaky sasquatch or any of those types of games yes um and it works it works extremely well um so pretty cool little gadget for seven dollars and 99 cents yeah it uh, actually i just uh, added it to my uh, amazon cart because <laughs> <laughs> it's eight dollars yeah it, it actually comes with like little and i didn't put them on this controller but it comes with like little thumbstick like uh that's a nice little rubber, bonus rubber bonus um which i think those things are normally at least like three or four bucks so and and it's not just the xbox they do have listed like your steel series uh nimbus controllers uh are also uh compatible if you have the steam controller so no that's that's pretty cool yeah the the way it's created um and the the other thing i'll tell you is if you didn't order that one yet um you can find usually find them in packs of like three for like 12 bucks or 13 dollars um so it's like buy one get two half off nice. um so yeah it's a it's a pretty cool little gadget it folds up i mean not super small but it folds up nice enough that you can throw it in your bag or throw it in wherever and be off with it i like it I, i've actually seen my brother um uh, using his while i was uh, visiting him on the break and uh, he but he's using his with his android phone because he has the uh, xbox streaming like x cloud mm-hmm. so he's playing like Full See, on that, games over there. That's what I'm really waiting for is when when the X Cloud rolls out to the normals. Mm-hmm. Um, I can actually use that on the go mm-hmm. and and play some games. So I'm excited for that as well. I could dig that. I could dig that. If uh, I'm curious what it's going to be like in out of Wi-Fi situations still, uh, but there, there was someone that talked about they live in New York and they played like on a train ride from like New York to Philly for something for work and then they played on the way home and it worked extremely well Hmm. so awesome uh katie what's your awesome thing turva's water bottle the water bottle (laughs) yes it's my water bottle look at my water bottle ta-da i was trying to send missy a link there was a there is a baby yoda version oh okay and but anyway so yeah this is my new water bottle one of my things is i've been trying well every year i feel like i try to do this i try to drink more water and i fail miserably at it and i just got this water bottle at christmas time and it's very pretty obviously and i love it because it's got this nice wide mouth on it and i drink more than if there's a straw in my water bottle because when i dump more water comes out less you know if you're using a straw you get a lot of air le- when le- you're su- less sipping yes Ta-ta. i do not like straws no I, I have some strange thing where like even like if i go to like mcdonald's and they give you the cut like i take the lid off i don't not a fan of the straw now there's certain situations i like straws but not i don't know like when when i really want to drink something i do not want a straw and i love the fact that on the side of the bottle it tells me how many ounces it's at so i can kind of keep track of yeah did you find the baby yeah Yoda? i found the baby Yoda the child one. i'm sorry yes. the child you can get a child but they have they have a variety of products that they keep so the turvis like keeps things warm and cold mm-hmm. so you can get a coffee cup or depending like i have, I have the water bottle um, but it'll keep things warm and cold, and it keeps it really cold, even though it doesn't like look like it would. But there's a double layer in there; it's very. But, cool. but she, she does not. If you're on audio, she does not have the baby Yoda. I know. So it, you want to give me the child? Wonderful floral <laughs> pattern going on there. Well, they have an R2D2 one too. That's floral pretty tree. Cool 
So there's a so, yeah. so so the one you have will it both will it do both hot and cold or do you have to get is it like a metal one that's for the hot? I would suggest using the metal one for the hot because you will definitely like I can feel that it's cool mm-hmm. now. But if mm-hmm. I have warm liquid in there, you will feel warm. But I and I wouldn't dump something extremely hot in here because I feel like it would crack. Crack. But like if you had something kind of warm, it wouldn't hurt it. But yeah. But yeah, there's nice little ounces in the side so you can keep track as you're going along. Like, how much water did I drink? Oh, I drank this much. Nice. Yeah. Mm. You can fully track that. Yeah, that, that. That's been a big thing for me. We have those Brita uh, water bottles so that they like, no matter what, it's going to be filtered. Uh, but again, there's like kind of that straw. It's like a flip up straw kind of yeah. situation. And after a while, I'm just like, I wonder if I'm cleaning this well enough. That, that's the other thing <laughs> I keep running into. I, I do. I like a straw when I have coffee because for whatever reason, I don't like hot liquids on my teeth, but I don't mind cold. Don't ask me why. Okay. But my straws after a while, I, even though I have the reusable ones, mm-hmm. I, they just start getting a weird taste. They're probably decomposing. And the metal ones I don't like on my teeth. At near my, you know what I mean? Like, is this the whole like fork on your teeth kind of things or mm-hmm. whatever? And then you can get the little silicone ends for those, but it's the same thing where you're getting that weird kind of taste. So that's why I, I, I like this with the wide mouth. Ooh, and then it's what if you have, have you ever used like Starbucks, like the Starbucks cups that come with like the fake plastic? It's the thick plastic straw, like the is it like the sippy cup ones or the yeah, like the sippy, yeah, yeah. kind of, yeah. <laughs> like they're they're like a mimic of their like regular plastic cup but it's like a thick plastic cup and they have like a a, like a reusable straw with them Mm. i found and it's actually thicker than the ones that come with the reusable collapsible foldable straws Mm -hmm. um but it's a thicker version of that cleaner thing like the squeegee bristle brush run it through on the metal cord um I find that I, I special ordered one that was meant for bigger straws and it actually works pretty well. Oh, cool. As, as long as you don't have a kid or small animal that likes to chew on the end of the plastic <laughs> yeah. straws. Um, or, or just, ner- well. or just nervous me. Yes. That's true. Yeah. So, well, uh, I, uh, w- of course it is CES and I think we are officially in the day one. If I'm, I, we might still be pre CES. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but, uh, of course there's a lot of fun stuff and, and, and there's a lot of interesting, uh, concept cars going on here. And, uh, uh, and I have one linked right here. Uh, oh wait, actually this is the little Tykes car <laughs> from, uh, from the BBC. Uh, somebody, <laughs> okay, this is my co-awesome thing because I just found this while I was waiting for uh, everybody to, to, to get online for the show. Um, somebody made a, a full-size little Tykes car in England and uh, it was featured on the BBC and it's pretty fantastic. Uh, uh, the guy made it for, I think they said about 4,000 pounds and <laughs> that he converted the car and they're actually going to be driving it from town to town to, uh, to, to raise money for charity. So a uh, really cool thing. Uh, going on there so and and, and i thought it were, uh, i think it was a fitting it was a fitting side by side with my uh actual awesome thing of the week so sony had a surprise um at ces and it's kind of hard to get an actual real surprise at ces but uh they actually unveiled an electric car uh it's a concept car fully uh to highlight its automotive technologies it's called the vision s it has sensors, other technologies, 3D sound, uh, cameras. They say that it has level two automation, and again, level four is the uh, uh, the full automation that we see, or you know, or you know, the the the, the, the auto drive challenge that I that I work with has been trying to um, um, get to. Uh, but it's a nice, sleek electric car. It, again, it's one of those like everything in it is is kind of a Sony technology. It's showing off some of the camera technology that they have going on there. Uh, the uh, uh, audio technology, like I said, there's like a 360 sound where depending on where you're sitting uh, in the car, you, you you get a full experience like equally uh, no matter where you, you're at. Uh, we're just looking at the outside so far. I'm trying to get an inside shot here where you actually see all the, I think we're just cycling through. I'm just looking at the same car shots over and over again. Uh, but <laughs> anyways, so um, it, it was a pretty cool thing. And, and, and again, like kind of a reminder, like, I guess they haven't been doing so so well, and, and we always think of it as a video game company. And maybe I don't know be, there are a lot of Sony TVs out there anymore. Chilla, I, I don't. I feel like I don't see. My, my, yeah, my mom has like a Sony Bravio, like OLED 
4K TV that she just got like a year ago. Mm -hmm. Um, So they're they're definitely and they're selling. I think their Android devices sell a little better overseas, but they're still doing Android devices. So yeah, yeah. So uh, it, it, <laughs> you you know that Sony still does phones. Whenever you watch a Sony movie, and there needs to be a cell phone. <laughs> There was something recently that that it, once again, like you know, obviously the um, uh, the Spider Man movies. I think even the Into the Spider Verse, and there was there was another Sony movie in in the last couple of months. I'm just like, oh hey, Sony still does phones. Oh, this is a Sony movie. Oh, here we go. So, um, so pretty cool there. And I'm, I'm kind of interested to see um, um, what more they come. And, and this is also it's not just Sony technology. Uh, they are using other other companies like Bosch and and uh, other pro- other technology providers as well. So uh, you know, kind of showing how everything kind of integrates in. So you can go check that out. Uh, I have the uh, Engadget coverage with some pictures and a, and a good video uh, going on over there. So. Um, and that's one of the, I mean, let's say CES is kind of fun because, you know, my, my, I don't know if, if you guys, my daily tech news show is just like, how many TVs can we announce in one day? And, uh, I'm getting kind of, uh, my head spinning in 8k technology news at this point, but, but you know what? Hey, you know, what's, what's still good. doesn't need to improve our, our good friends at slice on Broadway. Uh, here up the street, supporting perfect uh, pepper, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. I'm out of practice, and I got a runny nose, so I'm double. Uh, I'm I'm double having trouble here. Uh, anyways, down the, down the street here in Beachview, Carnegie, the East End, and PNC Park. Uh, they've been supporting the show for most of their ten years ish. Uh, doing this show. I think it will be ten years this year. Actually, I think we did start in 2010, if I don't re- if I recall. Uh, so go check them out. Support them. They've been supporting us. And uh, and uh, tell them that the awesome cast sent you. We have a few stories here. Uh, first of all, hey, uh, shout out to Chachi is still going strong with the GameJourney.com. He's heading into Sega games right now. Sega Genesis games, I believe. Uh, Echo the Dolphin. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I loved his post. It was like, what game do you hate? Like <laughs> after he posted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Echo is definitely on my list of. <laughs> yeah, Echo was was with, I it not, I never got Echo. Like mm-hmm. like I was like. It's like every couple of years, I was like, let's give Echo a try. Why <laughs> did we do this? Why is Echo the dolphin? And like, they made so many of them. And I felt like, oh, maybe I'm smarter now. Maybe I just didn't realize <laughs> something. And I go back and I still can't figure it out. It really feels like a prettier version of trying to go back and, wa- and play at and or AT, uh, E.T., wrong letters, <laughs> E.T.'s uh, 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 on Atari. Yeah. You know, because you're like, I'm still... In basically a water hole, and I don't know how to get out of this <laughs> nope, water hole. I've been here forever. Yeah, like, but they made so many of them. Mm-hmm. Why? <laughs> they hate so, us. Why? Well, I really, I think he didn't. He wrap up Nintendo with uh, Zelda. Was that his wrap up to Nintendo? Uh, yeah. So the 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 Legend of Zelda. Yes. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed his his review of, of Zelda. Excellent. It was a well worth read. Go check out the game journey.com. Support our buddy Chachi over there. Uh, he's doing, he's beginning, man, he's getting so hardcore in this. It, like Chachi is a writer now. That's great. Um, we had a few contributions on the awesome cast Facebook group. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Here we go. Well, Chachi is in there. Uh, Echo is a bad game. All caps. Echo is a bad, bad game. It <laughs> needs to go to the corner. <laughs> Thank you, Chachi. Um, our friend Brian uh, of pghmuseums.org uh, has a couple in here. Uh, first of all, an artist turned everyday objects into spaceship designs, and the result is out of the world is from boardpanda.com. Also, just love the name of that site. Uh, so let's see. We go in here, and this guy made um, – he, he took a <laughs> – he, he, he turned a, a controller and a, and a remote into a uh, spaceship. Um, he's just – it's just oh they're they're artist artist renditions. Um, so here's a Tabasco uh, sauce that or chili sauce uh, bottle they turned into a spaceship as well, and uh, spinner turned into a space station. A, a a lemon a lemon and and two spoons got turned into a ship. There's a really visual one uh, again. The links will be in the show notes here. Um, just just some uh, uh, um, inspired by kitchenware. Um, artist renditions here so go check that out at board boardpanda.com thanks brian for that also there is a toy gun that makes 350 clean spitballs from one roll of toilet paper 
and it's called the skid shot. Christopher wanted this for Christmas. Oh, really? <laughs> um, and we were like, there is no, I, and, and <laughs> clean that no up. Way. I, I love that. Like you just literally put the roll of paper on a spindle in the gun. Well, and you, you think spitballs, right? So you think it's going to be like actual spit. No, they, it has like a upside down water bottle to help form the spitball. Um, and all I all I envisioned was a multitude of spitballs all over my ceiling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and I don't know if you've ever had someone get like those um we had like rubber sticky eyeballs. Oh yeah, the ones that look like the quarter machine. Yeah. Yeah. And then like, you can throw them against the wall and they stick. Yeah. They leave like a grease mark. Okay. So, like, I have multiple small <laughs> dime-sized <laughs> grease marks on my kitchen ceiling that took forever to go away. And you have a high um, kitchen ceiling, so that's not easy to get to. It's not and, and, exactly. It's not easy to get to. So I'm Jeez. like, there is no way I'm cleaning these things off the ceiling. It's a good idea if you give it to somebody else's kit, or you play play with it outside. Yeah, it, it's yeah. a good. I could see it being like a spring toy. Toilet paper is is quite biodegradable, right? So yeah. I mean, that's just going to go away after a little bit. So um, that's awesome. You can get the cheap single ply stuff. Uh, Katie, do you see getting a skid shot in your feet? <laughs> no, I was thinking about there was a uh, the toilet bowl parade um, out what? in Wisconsin. I think it was toilet ball parade. Bowl bowl toilet, parade. Toilet, like it's a parade that okay. they um, essentially you there's tractors and stuff in it, and you throw rolls of toilet paper, and it's just everywhere. It's been going on for fifty five oh, years. So when you talked about that, that's what it reminded me of. And not having to clean up all that toilet paper. <laughs> toilet paper. That's awesome. Uh, it, was, it might be worthwhile worthwhile for a uh, outing someday to get a couple of those. Can we rent those? I oh, don't yeah. know if I'd want to own one of those. No, unless we're going to shoot each other for a while. Yeah. That could yeah. be fun. Not oh, a- awesome cast outing. <laughs> there picnic. you go. We need a picnic. An awesome cast picnic? Yes. Where we could just kinda, shoot each other. <laughs> I kind of want to do a Sorgatron Media picnic, to be honest. A picnic. That would be fun. I, I failed to do a Sorgatron Media party for a while now, so... I can think of some people on the podcast I like to shoot. With them. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hi, producer Missy. <laughs> no. Uh, Riz uh, shared a couple of stories here for PlayStation. Um, he, he's keeping us in line with the Sony PlayStation because the chill of the last I knew all you play is Spider-Man on yours. Yeah. That's, that's the only game I own. Well, <laughs> actually, you know what? I have um, an old copy of Watch Dogs. Yeah. And there was it's some kind of like run around and try to put bombs down to like clear out these things. Not Bomberman. No, it's not Bomberman. There's what? like two games that I got for like like a 99 cents a piece oh. off like the Play Store. Okay. The PlayStation whatever they what I think they call it their Play Store. Um I got those two games, which I really like. And the reason I got them was because I could play them on both the PS Vita mm-hmm. and the um, PlayStation. So you're, you're that, that very few people that had the PS Vita. So <laughs> I got it. I got it super cheap with like 15 games. Nice. It might be worth it. kind of picking up one of the, all, those old ones, huh? At this yeah, point. But the problem and the problem is, is that, um, it's really hard to find the games now. Like last time I yeah. went into GameStop, there were like, two games on the shelf yeah yeah so does that mean everything's cheap when you find it or does that mean it's expensive because you can't <clears throat> everything's cheap when you find it it's yeah. just to me it was harder to find that a couple sounds like of a games. fun that sounds like a fun scavenger hunt for game yeah. collecting but anyways <laughs> the playstation 5 will be having a huge backwards compatibility apparently all the way back to the original playstation um now that now the xbox also kind of announced this too and I'm. It seemed. It, so, are we talking in both cases? And chill. I don't know if you saw more of the Xbox one than I did. Are we talking like, oh, we'll have all these games available, or I can take my disc from the Xbox original or P- PlayStation One all the way back and stick it in and play it? I've seen where at least the way what they did when they revamped even the Xbox One, mm-hmm. um, it was slow. Like it. 
like they the backwards compatibility came in waves of games. It came in waves and 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 they had to tailor each game. And I don't believe you actually play the game off of a disc you own. I think it downloads a version of the game onto the the Xbox One. Yeah, I don't remember. I only have like one game left that I actually have the disc for. Oh yeah, I, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm playing like I, Halo Four works, and I still I still have to finish off Halo Four and things like that. But yeah, and again, like a lot of things I have on the digital just because it, gold is giving them out, right? Like I have a well, that, yeah, I I picked up a Star Wars Battle. The first Battlefront, I think it was, or no, Republic Commando, um, mm-hmm. which Christopher's been playing. Um, but then they, yeah, then they went back and did a, a, a select handful original Xbox games. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know what they did. I don't know how that's going to work on the new system. Is it going to be a separate version? I'm guessing they're going to want it to be a separate, depending on what you have and what the original disc had from like a 4k perspective, I'm going to guess they're going to want you to download new assets. That's my guess. Uh, well, it, it, which means not everything's going to be clear. I don't know. Everybody says that they're going to have stuff all the way back to the original of uh, PlayStation, Xbox, whatever. So what that means, I guess we'll see how that shakes out uh, in the end. So also you said January's free PS games uh, included Char- uncharted, the Nathan Drake collection, which I think is the first three, if I'm not mistaken and goat simulator. Yeah. Get that goat simulator. Yes. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Um, Dave Potter, he actually, and I'm glad he, he brought this up because my mother just got, uh, well, she was, she was given by her insurance company, uh, an echo car and to, to install. And she w- just went ahead and got herself an echo dot as well for the living room. So she can learn how to use it. Right. Uh, and, and just then it was when Potter, um, um, shared with this giant Oak Eagle pharmacy patients can now ask Mm-mm, echo. <laughs> Uh, Amazon virtual assistant um, to tell them can tell them to take pills and request refills. I actually poked at this a little bit. And yeah, you got to fill out the form and everything, and uh, you know that's kind of the, the, that that's helpful <laughs> as you as you, you get up there and you have like you know several different pills that you have to go through. And, and I did see there are other versions of these for other providers, but I didn't see anything like. You know, specifically for Rite Aid or anything like that, I could use a Rite Aid one myself because that's the one down the street from me. But uh, but really cool that something mostly more regional like Giant Eagle is actually using this and it has a uh, Echo Virtual Assistant um, app like this. So, um, but yeah, that can be handy. Uh, thanks, Dave Potter, Tiny Shutter Podcast, for um, sharing that as well. Uh, and again, you guys, if you want to see uh, some of these stories or things we missed because it was a long in between uh, our shows here with the holiday break, go check out the awesome cast. Um, check out the awesome cast uh, Facebook group over there. Um, so I'm going to try to do this ad without sneezing. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I want to give a shout out. Of course, we do a lot of stuff here, including this podcast, including a lot of other things for clients uh, with sidekick media services from sporting events, music video production, conferences, everywhere in, the te- in between the team over here and phone calls in the middle of... <laughs> Sorry. Chill's getting getting something going on over there. Uh, We can be a sidekick to your superhero project. What next big thing can we help you with? Uh, Find out more over at sidekickmediaservices.com. A lot of really cool projects already shaping up for 2020. Looking forward to working with some new people here uh, for some uh, new projects and podcasting, video production, and uh, and all kinds of fun stuff. So, And uh, and getting out there across the country, it seems, a bit too. Uh, So looking forward to all of that. All right, let's get into some more stories from the week. Um, uh, so, so, Chilla, you were talking about your iMac and uh, and and uh, how to mount it earlier. Yeah, so I got an older 2011 iMac, and and really what I was looking to do is create a digital photo frame for for my wall in my office. And then I, I also put one in the show notes. That's the the one from CES that was announced by Lenovo. Um, those usually run in the $400 price range. And I wanted something that was 20 inches or bigger and <clears throat> was Wi-Fi and could potentially um, take an SD card. So in looking, I'm like, well, I have an old 2011 iMac. It's in the box. Um 
it only came with, I think, four gig of RAM, and the the drive was an old 320 gig drive. So I'm like, well, I could probably turn this also into a, a Minecraft server, but the screensaver I could make, I could actually dump all of the photos into OneDrive or iCloud or wherever, all the pictures that I want to show, use that as the screensaver and also run it as a um, Minecraft server. So I went out and did some digging. The arm is not easily removable, unlike the screen display that we showed before the the uh, the show, because that's what I had to do to take out the old hard drive and put in a new one. The memory in this one, actually, you just unscrew the bottom and pop new memory in. Yeah, those ones are super easy. I have a t- uh, 2007 edition of those. So and, yeah. I, and I booted it up saying, oh, what can I do with this thing? So I jumped over to... Amazon and started Googling around someone sells and I put the first link in there is the Vivo adapter visa mount kit. Um, And it's a dual bracket. If you go to the, I think it's the third picture in the frame. Um, It kind of clamps on between um, around the arm. It's four screws. Um, You get that rocking and rolling and then you mount up your, uh, wall arm or if you have a desk arm or whatever type of arm you have um and hopefully a very sturdy one because the imac's going to be pretty heavy by itself it's about 20 pounds Mm -hmm. um so i got something that's meant for like a 37 inch monitor just in case Mm -hmm. um the one thing i will warn you is if you look at the clearance and the curve of the way that the mount comes up off the back of the the iMac notice that the visa mount that they show in the picture is small form factor for like old old 17 19 20 some inch screens so it has that tight square screw pattern Um, if you go to the second link in there i actually bought my my arm mount based on like it was like a link at the bottom of this page but it wasn't from the same manufacturer it was just a hey here's some mounts that that people liked um well when i bought the the actual arm it serviced anything from like a 17 inch to like 40 some inch tv um and it it could definitely handle the 20 pounds um unfortunately the mount was too big square wise so it bumped into the bottom of the arm because the arm goes back the arm of the mac goes back on an angle Mm -hmm. so i simply took a hacksaw to the bottom (laughs) (laughs) sounds about right all right (laughs) i like if you look at that that picture right there where Uh, by the way hacksaw needed not linked in uh in a story there's there, that inner square. I just kind of cut down mm-hmm. um, the bottom of it, and <laughs> and then it screwed right on, and I hung it right on my wall. So a little bit of modification. The thing, but the kicker was the thing that I liked about the arm I got mm-hmm. was that it came with a stud finder, and it oh. like I have I have a normal stud finder. Yeah, but sometimes the stud finder's off, even if it's off by like less than a quarter of an inch you end up missing the stud if you're if you're not not getting it right and i didn't want this thing falling off the wall yeah the stud finder they give you is a is a small high-powered magnet i think I, it's right here um it's this small little device and it has a very high-powered magnet in it hmm. so it will literally find the screw underneath the paint underneath the drywall mud to make sure that as long as your drywall is hung properly, <laughs> you're going to definitely find pretty much the center of the stud, um, which I actually ended up using it. And unfortunately, the screw the screw that I found is actually behind the monitor. I'd show you it'll actually stick to the wall wherever the screw is. Nice. So, and, it, and it also comes with a very small, tiny, I don't know if you can see it in there. It's got one of those levels. So there's a little bubble in there. So once you... Once you get your screw on there and you get your th- the first screw in for the, the um, mount, you actually put this on the top and it, cl- it clings to the actual wall mount. And then you can perfectly level the arm as well. 
So that's actually what got me to buy the arm that I bought, not realizing that it was going to be too big. Uh, Katie, uh, you you had you had a very good awareness article yes. that you shared this week. That I get I I to credit Uncle about. Crappy. Uncle Crappy, of course, yep. our friend in the in the uh, mm-hmm. in the news. Uh, so uh, you you had something about fake articles. Yes. So this is anything with tech, especially with things that are coming up around the world, and mm-hmm. anything with tech right now. You know, there's so many deep fakes. This is fake. This is fake. Everything's you can you can make anything look like anything at this point with photoshop and this is how to use your phone to spot fake images uh this can be used for anything insert anything here just spot fake images um some good tips in here like for example just look at the picture um for example when was the photo taken uh what time of year are there people they use the example of it's 35 degrees in iran now and if people are in long sleeve shirts or short sleeve shirts they wouldn't be in short sleeve shirts um where was the picture taken like figure out where from which direction like who would actually be taking the photo could you actually take a photo from that particular angle uh inconsistent lighting so you can tell there's a manipulation there you might have a shadow on one side of a person's face and then the opposite side of another person's face and you're like that's not right and then it gives you tools that you can use um google reverse image search is great for this um there's something i've never heard of tin eye uh works similar to google uh reverse image and then uh, it's a great to determine whether a photo is actually from today or from 10 years ago. Because a lot of times people will pass around mm-hmm. photos and articles from 10 years ago like they're brand new. And you're like, holy crap, this just happened. I it's just new. had one where uh, uh, my sister and some other people had shared one about uh, five planets are lining up they haven't done it in a yeah. decade. And then I looked at the, at, at the article and I'm just like, and I, I hate to be that person yeah. and be like, Hey guys, this article is from three years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so we see it a know. lot with celebrity deaths too. Yeah, yeah. yeah so and so just died. And you're like, no, sorry. They... It's like yeah, it was a while ago. Yeah, yeah but did. but but when people share things, mostly they're not clicking through and reading the article, no. or the article is so bad on a phone that you can't find the actual information. Mm-hmm. That you're just like, oh hey, look, tonight this is happening, and I'm seeing reading it now. Therefore. It's real and yes. now. It's <laughs> so. happening right now. And yeah, it's and a lot of times they make it hard to find dates on things on purpose. So you have trouble figuring out whether or not this is a new article or not. But it's just uh doing some due diligence, especially with everything going on. And also the big thing is humility, which people do not possess in especially in the social media world. You're not perfect. We've all shared articles that have been old or photos that have been doctored accidentally and yeah. not, without oh, doing our research. Just, yeah. oh, screwed up, admit it, move on. Like, don't, <laughs> I am a thousand percent correct because this aligns with my views. You're like, not necessarily. Mm-hmm. But, and, and especially today, since there is a lot going on, I know I'm seeing even notifications as we're sitting here about what's going on in the other side of the world. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, this is, this is the kind of, you know, uh, misinformation that, you know, we've been talking about since the, the last big election. Right? Yeah. So kind of that. And there's only so much you're going to be able to do. I mean, I have plenty of relatives still sending me very, very strange things. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I've honestly, I've snoozed a lot of people on Facebook. That's a big thing. That could be a good, awesome thing of the week is if you did not know that you can snooze people for 30 days on Facebook. Uh, I use it a lot. Yeah. If you don't know if you're ready to quite unfriend them yet and you just need to snooze them and see if that improves your life. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it helps your mental health mm-hmm. a lot. You'd be like, you know what? This guy's going through a thing right now. Maybe I don't need to see it right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. Maybe in 30 days, it's all past and we'll be better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes so. it does, and so sometimes you just got to unfriend some folks. But then if you realize, oh, no, I think I've snoozed this guy like three times. <laughs> Maybe I need to let them. Maybe we need to come to terms on this on Facebook, okay? <laughs> well, it'll be like I forgot. I like I'll, I'll see an article or something from somebody. I'm like, oh, I forgot I was friends with. Oh, that's why. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Just keep snoozing you. Yeah. You never know. Do Do you guys actually reject Facebook requests? Oh, they just sit there in limbo. I'm, I'm the limbo, limbo person. You're, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. The limbo person too. Well, so I, th- I think. Well, Katie, you, you're probably in a similar position as me, as you run into a lot of people that then you befriend. Yeah. Because they know you from X, Y, and Z, and you're just like, I don't know if I, I don't want to be friends with all of them and see all of that. Because I'm probably going to end up snoozing you a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for instance. Yeah. There's that, so, that first, like, let me see a few of your public. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't need every wrestler I've met, fan I've met, you know, at a show. Like, because then I'm going to see all of their life. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if I need that, you know, kind of thing for that many people. So, um, yeah, no, no, they just sit there in limbo. 
man. Mm-hmm. And, and sometimes I'll go back through and recognize somebody that I've actually started talking to at like shows or something. And I'm like, oh no, they're cool. I'm letting them in. <laughs> It'll be old too. I'll feel really dumb. Like if it's yes. somebody from years ago, then I was like, oh, I should have added you. Yeah. Years ago. Oh, wait, they're actually cool, but I didn't know that yet. Um, I actually had I've had people call me out in the middle of a Permanis for not uh, approving their friend request. Like stuff like that has happened, which is very awkward. And I'll be like, well, uh, you know, I don't I get a lot of requests. I'm sorry. Then you sound then you sound like that asshole. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was at the friend limit. Yeah, I'm at my friend limit. I wish I was at the friend limit. You know, I, have, I think I only have like 400 friends on there or something, um, because I am so selective about it. I'm afraid to look at where, where is uh? I was gonna try to pull up my friends and see how deep my uh, deep down the rabbit hole some people are. Uh, the friend <laughs> I have, requests. I currently have 274 requests sitting there. Um. So. Wow. Yeah, and and just a quick, quick scan. I have 165. Uh, you know what? <laughs> you know what? I, I wait, 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 wait. This guy, I know this guy. I, look, you just somebody just got in. Okay. <laughs> it's like it's like the damn Hunger Games with my friends list. Okay. You what? What do they say whenever, whenever you get let in? Volunteers the, uh, tribute. The yes, you you were not. Yeah. Hey, 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 Nick Griffin, you of Black Diamond Wrestling, you <laughs> you now <laughs> contribute to the awesome cast. So. Um. Anyways, uh, but look out for each other too. Um, I I think don't be afraid to call these out too. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, in the best way. I usually just post a Snopes article. Yeah, <laughs> it should be like if it doesn't already pop up. Yeah, which it, is really nice. It, it, yes, yes. There's um. <laughs> like, okay. There's um on my there's there's one I've been playing with a little bit. We talked about it a while ago, and I keep forgetting that I still have it on Chrome. It's like news news archive news something. Where it does, if you go through with it, it's only on my PCs uh, because I use Firefox on my Mac. Um, but I'll go through Facebook, and under the Facebook article, it'll post like the little green thing or the yellow thing, and and you can follow through and see see what the source kind of looks like. So that's that's really helpful. If you can just, I know we're just past the holidays, but if you can secretly just install that on your on your relatives' computers to help them out yes. a little bit, um, that that could be helpful too. So. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, I wanted to, oh my my articles just went away. Um, let's see, there was a lot of recap over the over the holidays, of course. Um, nope, that's the fan stuff. Um, there was this was what's that? <laughs> I was gonna get to that the Yay. the Wally chair. Um, Segway is doing something. I think the first new product since the Segway, right? So many years ago, um, they they have the Wally chair, guys. It's uh, self balancing. It's egg shaped. It's on two wheels. There is another wheel for like I guess transport or something like that. They're dubbing it the S Pod. It is going to be coming out uh, later this year in 2020 and uh, to the public in 2021. No price has been given. They were given some demos, I believe, uh, leading into uh, CES. I believe. I don't know. I just imagine everything's at CES. Oh, there's a nice video of it in action. There you go. <laughs> How does it turn? Um, I think there's a joystick. It also says the S Pod was inspired by the gyrosphere from Jurassic World. Oh. <laughs> and it can hit a top speed of a whopping 24 miles an hour as you're running from the Raptors. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but I, I guess this is more accessible because then you don't have to stand, and then that you know more more people with uh, disabilities can use it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be and it's gonna showed off in CES uh, as well. So, um, looking forward to that. And 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 Wally uh, is closer and closer to becoming real life. So, fantastic. Um, also, I I was. I was going down a YouTube rabbit hole the other day, and I found this video uh, from IGN that told a great story. I hope Chachi's still in the chat room for this one. Uh, it told a great story. I think I might send this to him too um, about uh, the, the an electronics develop or an electronics seller in uh, Sweden that basically just had an electronics shop. Went to Japan, found Game and Watch, the Nintendo old LCD Game and Watches, um, which were only in Japan. Like they had not really broken out um uh, in the west or let alone um you know in sweden right he sent so this this wonderful story about how he sent a fax to nintendo somehow ended up with a meeting 
unannounced in Japan and got the <laughs> rights for Western distribution, uh, Scandinavian distribution of Nintendo products, starting with the game on watch, which turned into like millions sold. And still to this day, while we have Nintendo of America and Nintendo of Europe, he basically is Nintendo of Scandinavia. <laughs> Even to the point where apparently when he visited them, they showed him the Famicom, which became the Nintendo Entertainment System, and they weren't up for bringing it over because of the Atari uh, video game crash of the mid-80s. And uh, he bugged the crap of them out of them, it seems. <laughs> and And may have been... Uh, instrumental in us getting the Nintendo Entertainment System that, of course, did uh, did monster sales and still does stuff with them now. Like, still is their distributor. Just has a shop with a giant, like, Mario with a pipe in front of his shop and everything and, and is basically... It has, like, a, a museum to it. And it's uh, IGN. It's uh, the lie that helped build Nintendo. And it's a fantastic little story um about the, the, this journalist that um that, that did a story on uh uh, uh ceo uh Bergsa, bergsala um that was uh, involved in this um a nice little kind of docu piece that they had go on over there so go check that out it's on ign uh the the the, the lie that helped build nintendo and uh definitely they're worthwhile if you're kind of a gaming historian i, I get lost sometimes in these um his, history of video games history of wrestling history of uh, movies I, I found myself watching a video about the differences in the suit from Shredder from the first and second Ninja Turtles movie today. Uh, I would just, I just, I just can't, I can't. And, and and some of them aren't very good. Like I mean, some of them are okay, but like some of them aren't edited very well either. So it's it's kind of it's kind of hard to digest it. But you still you still find yourself watching, like some kind of weird YouTube car wreck. So, um. Other thing that popped up, uh, this was kind of fun. Um, well, horrible, horrible reason. Uh, but, uh, of course, Australia has a lot of bushfires going on. Like, I, I saw it. <laughs> not th that's what the article says. It's real. Uh, Australia has a lot of fires going on, right? And uh, a U.S. model raised more than $750,000 for the cause for fighting the fires in Australia by sending nudes to her followers. Um, so this was interesting, not just because she did that and, and it raised so much money, um, in the article, and now it's running a commercial for some reason, um, she had, she had hired four people to, uh, take on the task of responding to all the messages, um, has been disowned by her family. What was it? The, the quote that I, I, I put out there on the article says, uh, my Instagram got deleted. My family disowned me and the guy that I like won't talk to me. All because of that tweet, uh, she said. But but f it, save the koalas. So she got suspended from Instagram for breaking its terms of service over this. Was kind of kind of that. So a lot came out of this. But again, she she raised um, you know three quarters of a million dollars for a, a really good cause uh, going on over there. So um, I, I I thought that was interesting. Um, you know that. But I, and, and I'm sure there's more to the story, but it's interesting that she lost access to Instagram over this. Yes. Yeah, Twitter did, didn't do much. So <laughs> Twitter seems much more relaxed on that type of content. Yeah, it does. It does. I, you find it by accident. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, Instagram's been shutting down like nude accounts and stuff, right? Yeah. Like there's porn stars on there, and but but they don't like they're not doing too like. You can't make money off of it. Like you could post whatever you want, uh, but when you start making money off of it, it's it's it just they they're really not into any sex workers making any sort of money. Okay. using Instagram. Okay, so that's is, the official stance. It, yeah. it, it probably carries over from Facebook rules too, right? Pro yeah, yeah. So, so it's part of their terms of service, which is, but that's right. I lo I love she she changed her Twitter um title to the Naked Philanthropist. So, um, but interesting story there, and uh, I understand there was a bit of rain there in the last couple of days mm -hmm. so they're, they're getting relieved a little bit so good to hear that things are maybe potentially turning around there in australia a little bit so uh anything else you guys want to touch on here in the uh in the big list i'm sure we're gonna have plenty more from ces next week i think i, I hit all the main ones i wanted to hit did we what about your photo frame sir well, that that just goes back to the whole concept of I was looking for photo frames. This one's from CES, so it's kind of a new one. 
So it's, it's newer. Um, it's a smart display that can stop the, the doubles as a digital photo frame. Um, it's meant to be mounted on a wall, which was something I was looking for. Um, you can also put it on looks an like easel. A matted, looks like a matted picture in the long yep. run. Um, but it's it's four hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a ten eighty p. Um, has an eighty five degree re- uh, viewing angle. Um, but I go back to the price. I think like that. Like I said, the old iMac I had, I plan on using for something else in addition to the pictures that I want to scroll across it. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think the six, the 16 gig memory upgrade set me back 40 bucks and the terabyte drive was like 80. <laughs> um, and it's an, a terabyte SSD. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm still well over $200 ahead of the game and it runs an entire operating system. So um I think I'll stick with the computer. Yeah. <laughs> if you have it, go for it. Well, it looks like this looks like a status thing. They should, they would sell at Ikea from the pictures I was seeing there. Uh, Steve's in the chat and says Twitter, uh, uh, referring to our previous story, Twitter shows it all. You could literally watch free porn all day if you wanted. And if you want to support Steve's uh, p- watch porn all day habit, please go uh, listen to Bull Sports Pittsburgh <laughs> recording tonight for episode 109. Uh, so anyways, uh, one last story. Katie, I think I tagged you in this one earlier. Yeah, but see, I almost this one's almost we're gonna have to come back to this next week too, because I'm not sure because right now CES is like, yay, we're gonna let your sex toy company in mm-hmm. to uh CES, but I'm kind of curious if they'll end up well, because they went back and forth last year about it. Like it's cool, but it's yeah. not cool. So apparently this there's like, there's a lot more of that in the news this time. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm guessing they can't I I don't think they can remove it now. Mm-hmm. So it's they, the they opened the floodgates. The, yeah. The OSE. Yes. OSE with a let's say they do kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is a it is a women's toy, mm-hmm. I believe. If I'm, well, if women's I'm... pretty much. I mean, it's 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 it could be used for pretty much anyone, but they kind of target towards women. Yes, a women's toy. Yeah. Um, and it had apparently uh won and then lost and then won back a robotics award a year ago. Mm-hmm. Um, it does some things. Um, um with a uh, come hither gesture. I'm not going to get too into it uh but uh it's uh so it, it is back so uh, you know ces i guess has been kind of going back and forth with this and is ces also the one that um are they the ones that run it like at the same time as the adult film they, like, so they're supposed to so it's usually yeah. at the same time as the aee which is the adult entertainment expo mm-hmm. but aee it rescheduled till 2012 so they're not 20. running you mean 20, 20, 21. 21, yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, no, rescheduled. So since it's no, since it started rescheduling in 2012, is what I meant to say. I can't okay. say. So they're not. At, oh, okay. okay. There doesn't seem like they're at the same time anymore. Oh, they haven't been since. It, it looks they, like, yeah. Sorry. I can't they, read they, numbers. They, like a week up, they, they started by moving, I think, theirs. Because they used to be in the same... Mm-hmm. Same building, building, right? Yeah, because the, yeah, the CS like, mm-hmm. reporters will be like, oh, yeah, then I go across the hall and I'm at a sex show. Mm-hmm. You know, from from and they, they moved. Yeah, they moved buildings, and then I think shortly thereafter they moved buildings. They actually uh, moved weeks. Mm-hmm. Like I think theirs is the week after or something like that. So, yeah. anyway. so. so they're doing like a one year trial. See, um, they're they're like going to give them a one year trial of sex tech at CES this year. Mm-hmm. They're like, well, let's see what happens. And <laughs> I don't know what the expectations are <laughs> at, at, at this point. But, Nothing um, sexually revealing, clothing or undergarments. No, we're talking about like... And it still has the ban on pornography. Yeah, it, like itself. But we're talking about robotics and a toy, mm-hmm. you know, that, that does a thing. Mm-hmm. So we're not going to see like sex robots there. No. We well, I, I, I guess we technically are. Yeah. But <laughs> in different but, capacities. <laughs> in different capacities. But I'm, not, I'm saying like not a, like a real doll. Yeah, you're not like going to see that there now. So... Um, hey, it's technology, and a lot of times this kind of pushes technology forward, as we've seen with videos. Mm-hmm. So uh, we'll see what happens there. So uh, keep an eye on that. And I'm sure there will be plenty of stories in your feed somewhere or another um, uh, with that. So um, so we're just starting with CES. Our, and, and, and from year to year, I mean, it seems like it's a lot of TVs and computers we almost feel like we've never seen. Is there anything so far you are kind of were or are looking forward to at CES? to see like what might be coming next or is anything that we put out there already uh spurred your your thoughts on that guys 
I'm I'm personally more interested in E3 and yeah the some of the other some of the other shows um, World Mobile Congress will be coming up so yeah there's nothing I'm not seeing anything huge um, or earth shattering so I, I'm waiting for other shows this year not necessarily CES. What about you, Kenny? I don't know, but somebody, CES 2020, restaurant cat robot meows at dining customers. <laughs> I, <laughs> I These heard, are the real stories. This is what I'm into. Mm-hmm. Designed to ferry plates of food to restaurant customers has been unveiled at CES. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bella bot. So yes, I can have a cat feed me or bring me food. It looks like. Maybe. Yes, the table waiting robot cat. <laughs> Teddy, table ra- <laughs> waiting robot cat. Please drop that link in there. <laughs> Just <laughs> so we can this. check that out later. <laughs> That's awesome. exciting. And that, that's a big thing for me. I always like um the 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 Gizwiz uh Dick D uh Bartello um um usually goes to what is this, I've heard it referred to as the basement where all the crap is. Uh but like all that weird the weird technology, the weird attempts, um you know, that that's that's kind of like what I, what I like to see. You know, I don't expect like I I'm getting tired of hearing specs on AK TVs at this point. Um and what those are going to be, and and uh, uh, you know some of the the computer like the new uh, NUC uh, mini computer uh, gaming computer concepts look pretty cool, um, and could see using those in maybe place of a Mac Mini kind of situation to be honest. Uh, but uh, I'm always looking for those. But uh, interesting to see what what's going to come from this. I mean, it's, it it's also catches up on me because it was like what the second last last week, and I was like, oh hey, CS. Like you get through the holidays and it's like, hey, this is happening. So how did we not? See? Oh my gosh! What robot? Uh, Char- Charmin, uh, the toilet paper. Uh, it, it's it made what? a droid that will find you in your house if you're out of toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> how did it we'll find you? This is, it's, it's, it's in the same article that I dropped, but I was just like, oh my god. <laughs> Uh, well, there you go. That's what CES is for. Oh my gosh, the toilet paper. All <laughs> right. <robot>. Uh... <laughs> Uh, John Chichilla is uh, ChillaTech.net. Oh, John Chichilla on the Facebooks, <laughs> Chilla on the Twitters. Did I see, did I do that opposite as usual? I don't know. I you know I had to hurry up and hit. It the, felt I, wrong. I, started, I heard it. I started talking, and then I realized I was muted. Mm-hmm. Then I had to hurry up and unmute. So no, awesome. I think you got. I'm not sure. <laughs> Anyways, we got it in there. Yay. We got our spots in. That's what that's what's important. Katie at Kate Dutters on the Twitter. Yes, Kate Marie PGH on Instagram. Yeah, keep up on your adventures. Oh, yeah. And, uh, of course, at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Uh, the producer, Missy, is here as well. Thank you, producer, Missy. for. I hope you got all those cat links for me gathered up to check out later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, excited to get in here for uh, 2020. And, again, let us know. Join the, join the group. Let us know any tech stuff you want uh, um, us to talk about. And, of course, if you need any help, like my mom has been asking a lot of questions over the last several weeks uh, <laughs> of the awesome casters as well. Um, but uh, until then, thank you. You guys have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.